Good morning, everyone, uh, or uh, good afternoon for those of you in the East Coast. My name is Natalie Zivkak, and I'd like to welcome you to today's uh, webinar on the Payroll Accounting Second Edition. We'll get started in uh, just one minute. We'll uh, let some other people join us here, and then uh, we will kick it off. So welcome. Okay, so I have, uh, I have the top of the hour now. So I'd like to welcome you all to today's payroll accounting webinar. Again, my name is Natalie Zivkak, and uh, I'd also like to welcome Jason Favreau, who's the product manager for our payroll accounting solution and uh, the manager of our business and accounting series. And today uh, we will be joined by Eric Weinstein, who's the author of our payroll accounting solution. And so to kick it off, I'd first like to start with some housekeeping. As you can see, the webinar control panel, that orange arrow on the top right, you can click that to actually shrink the webinar panel to the right. And you won't need any mic and speakers today. Uh, we will be doing all of the questions using the question pane, which is further down at the bottom there. And if you'd like to test that out, if you could type uh, where you're coming from today and sim click Submit to me, and uh, we can test that out. And that, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to type it in there, and uh, I'll either answer it as we go through, or we'll answer it for sure at the end of the webinar. And also, if you require any technical support, you can see the number there on the bottom of the screen. Please feel free to call in, and uh, we'll be happy to help get you going. So to get started here, let me give the, uh, an overview of what we're going to talk about today. This webinar is intended to give you an overview of our latest edition of the Payroll Accounting Solution, giving you a jump start on your evaluation for your classes. During the course of the webinar, we'll cover the content of the course, chapter structure, and key features, including various exercises and comprehensive projects. We'll also be introducing our brand new homework grader for automated assessment with this new edition. So with that, let me introduce our author, Eric Weinstein. Eric is an MBA and a CPA and currently an instructor at Suffolk County Community College. He graduated from Georgetown University and the Duke Fuqua School of Business with an MBA. He has received the State University of New York Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Teaching. And he is a practicing CPA while being the dad to twin boys who are a little over a year old, Tyler and Lucas. So he definitely has a busy schedule. So thank you so much, Eric, for joining us today and, uh, and giving us this webinar. Thank you very much, Natalie, and, and thank you to everyone who's, uh, who's here at the session today. I appreciate you taking the time to take a look at our payroll solution, which we are extremely excited about. Uh, before I jump into walking you through the manuscript itself, what I'd like to do is just briefly look at a few points here on the screen. Um, we conducted a, a great deal of research prior to beginning the authoring process so that we could understand what people liked and disliked about the, the current solutions on the market and what we might be able to do to better serve both educators and students. As we did so, some of the things that we learned and, and items that we therefore implemented within this solution are that folks were looking for a, a greater balance between the theory and the practical skills. Uh, what we've done is we've taken a very practical approach. We present the payroll cycle beginning to end from, our cha from chapter one through chapter six, which you'll see in a moment. Uh, we introduce theory in the book, of course, but only when it's necessary to explain to the student why they are taking the steps that they are taking as part of the payroll cycle. So we don't have any dedicated theory chapters or anything along those lines as you might see in some of our competitors' offerings. We have a wide variety of exercises, uh, both if, in which we walk the student through the examples so that they have an understanding, a step-by-step -step process that they can follow when they move forward, as well as exercises at the end of the chapters, which are meant for the students to reinforce that which they've learned. Uh, we provide multiple types, of, multiple types of exercises and then multiple exercises within each of those types so that the students can get a lot of practice and so that the educator has a lot of flexibility in the manner in which they present the material to the students. We try to simplify the process by including easy to read concepts and easy to follow exercises. And really what you'll see for the, let's say, the completion of forms throughout the book or the calculations that are necessary for gross pay and things of the like is that we, we try to provide a roadmap to the students. We walk them through examples step by step showing them each element and how it is to be completed so that students can then move forward and complete the work on their own when they get to the end of chapter exercises. This course has been designed so that it will struct will, the, the structure will be set up in that way 
for a face-to-face -face class, but in particular this functions very well for an online environment as well because we do have those step-by-step -step instructions. What, we've stri what we strive to do is to answer the questions that the students would have asked in class within the book itself as we're going through those explanations so that the students can jump directly into answering the questions on their own. And again, particularly in an online environment, so the students who perhaps are working a bit more independently are able to continue to move forward because those roadmaps are available for them to refer back to. We're very excited about our homework grader, which will provide real-time feedback and automatically grade homework assignments within the eLab system that Jason will speak about later. And then one of the core, core features or, or core uh, tenets of, of our, our organization is to provide an affordable solution for students uh, that is consistent throughout all of our offerings. And, and we've certainly done so here with the payroll solution as well, which is priced significantly lower than any of our competitors' offerings. And that is with the QuickBooks trial software included. We include uh, access to our eLab online system and access to 140-day QuickBooks trial software, all for one price. There's no additional charge for any of those elements that we include there. And we'll speak about how QuickBooks has been implemented in, into this book as well as we move forward. So that said, what I'd now like to do is to jump to the manuscript itself. I'd first like to focus on the table of contents briefly just so that you get a high-level view of the manner in which the book is structured. And then to jump into both chapters one and chapter two uh, so that you can see how we handled certain of the elements, how we explained the material, and then how we provided some end of lesson exercises in order to reinforce the material for the students. If you'll bear with me for one moment, I'll just pull this up full screen and then we'll take a look at some of the, the uh, chapters that we have here. All right, so we begin in chapter one with the processing of a new employee. And the idea here is that we want to look at all of those steps that are necessary for a business to begin hiring employees and or for an employee to begin working for a business. There are a number of forms that need to be completed for those processes to be undertaken. And so we focus on those here in this chapter. You don't really see a comparable chapter to this one in any of our competitors or in most of our competitors' offerings. Um, the, uh, and because this chapter focuses so heavily on the beginning of the process, how a business or an employee can get ramped up, it is very form heavy. There are a lot of forms that we review within this chapter. That's actually the reason why I'll be showing you two chapters today. I want to show you how we handle the, uh, the introduction of forms throughout chapter one, but then I also want you to see the manner in which we introduce calculations in chapter two, which is why we'll skip from one chapter to the next. As you can see here, Chapter 2 focuses on calculating employee pay and then focuses on certain elements aside from just general gross pay, such as commissions, bonuses, incentive plans, etc. Moving on, Chapter 3, you can see here, is federal and state income tax withholdings. So we talk about those withholdings, how they are calculated, the different uh, methods that can be used, etc. We then move on in Chapter 4 to FICA taxes, Social Security and Medicare, as well as a variety of voluntary deductions that we introduce. And you can see we're following the payroll cycle beginning to end as we go through these chapters. The next step in Chapter 5 is to look at the federal and state unemployment taxes. And then there are a couple of elements that don't fit entirely neatly into the payroll cycle and which will not impact uh, many organizations, but some will be impacted, and therefore we do need to introduce them. We've included those here in Chapter 5 as well. Those include non-employee compensation and the Self-Employment Contributions Act, which you see here. And then lastly, in Chapter 6, we look at periodic, quarterly, basically and year-end payroll reporting. And because, again, we're looking at the reporting, I'll scroll down here so you can take a look at all the, the topics, because we are looking at that periodic and year-end reporting in this chapter, chapter six, similar to chapter one, is very form heavy since you have a lot of forms that need to be completed at the end of the payroll cycle. So we examine those there in chapter six as well. Moving down, we do have a Chapter 7, which uh, includes two comprehensive projects, a one-month and a three-month, so that the educator can decide which of these lengths is more appropriate for the student population. Those projects can be completed either manually using templates that we've provided, and I'll talk about those in a little bit, or they can be completed within the QuickBooks environment. So we'll speak about how that works a little bit later on. And then we have three appendices. The federal tax tables are included. We have a, a payroll tax calendar that we've included. And then we include state tax department websites as well. We don't get into state tax forms as we make our way through the book, but we do introduce state tax issues. And we want to give the educator an opportunity to assign uh, exercises which will force students to learn more about their particular state's payroll tax uh, forms, rates, et cetera. So we provide these websites, and you'll see a little later how we put some exercises in the, the text as well, which will encourage students to go to the internet and learn more about their particular state. 
Next, I'm going to scroll down and take a look at Chapter 1 so you can get a sense of the structure that is consistent throughout each of our chapters. So here's the first page, our chapter opener for Chapter 1. And, and, and you can see it's a, on the right-hand side we have some bullet points which uh, identify certain of the items that we'll be discussing here in the first chapter. And then if I scroll down a bit more, you can see that we have a, a brief paragraph discussing, again, the contents of the upcoming chapter. On the next page, we have our case study, and, and, and this is a, a good item to take a look at. We, we've created a company, Lucky Ties Apparel, which we follow throughout the, cha the, the text. We go from chapters 1 through 6 and follow the employees of this company. And again, the idea is that we want to give the student a full picture of the entire payroll cycle from beginning to end for a single company. So we use Lucky Ties Apparel wherever appropriate in our examples that we provide in the chapter. And again, I'll show you a little bit later how that functions. But uh, this is a company that we've created and that does follow consistently throughout. Uh, this brings us to our first concept section, which is the employee pay stub. Now, what we've done with these concept sections is to make them essentially short hits. They are one and a half, two, two and a half pages in length, typically. And, and the reason why we've structured them in that manner is, again, based on the research that we had conducted prior to beginning the authoring process. What we were told was that one of the, the great difficulties that educators were finding was that they were having trouble getting students to actually read all of the material in the text and, and just keeping their attention was was not the easiest task and so what we've done to try to accomplish this is we've again created concept sections that are relatively short and then we immediately jump into an example where we walk the student through the completion of whatever was just introduced if I scroll down here you can see that we only have a couple of pages and then we get to our first what we refer to as case in point section the case in point sections, again, will walk the student through the completion of some element that was just introduced. Now, in these first few concept sections in Chapter 1, since we're just getting started, we can't do much with these case in point sections other than ask questions and then explain a bit more on top of what had already been introduced, you know, how these different elements function. So I'm actually going to skip through because these are not representative of what you typically see in the case in point sections. So if I scroll down here, we're going to go through the Fair Labor Standards Act, which is, again, a couple of pages long brings us to our second case in point, but, but this is really where I'd like to start is with the Circular E and Form SS4. Here you'll get a good feel for how the case in point sections function when a form is introduced. We'll be looking at Form SS4 within the case in point section. Before I jump forward, I do want to simply or briefly point out a couple of elements here on this page. We have our on the web feature, which is shown there on the left, and then we have a tip down at the bottom. The on the web feature is consistent throughout the text, and, and what we've done is we've uh, listed URLs for elements that are introduced wherever there is a, an obvious URL to be presented uh, so that the student can, by scanning the QR code that you see there on their smartphone or tablet, immediately jump to a, a page that is relevant to the information being presented. In this case, it's Publication 15, the Circular E, that the student can immediately jump to online by scanning that QR code or by typing in the, the URL if they chose to. Uh, so these are, are presented throughout the book, and they allow for the student to, again, get that real-time access to whatever it is that's being introduced in a given concept section. We also have the tip down there at the bottom. We have, in addition to tips, notes and warnings, and those are, are essentially meant to highlight, to uh, make sure that the student's attention is drawn to a particularly important element that, that relates to the information within a given concept section. Um, and so you'll see those sprinkled throughout as well. It's another manner in which we've tried to break up the, uh, the concepts as we present them so that the students uh, do not lull off and they are, you know, they, they, they do kind of maintain as they work through each of the chapters. Now as I scroll down you'll see that we have again about a page and a half here of concept and then we get to an examine the form section which precedes our case in point whenever there is a form that's being introduced. The examine the form section is going to show a blank version of whatever form has been introduced in the section. In this case, it's form SS4. So you can see we have our blank version here. And then if I scroll down to the next page, what we then do is we go line by line and provide an explanation to the student as to what is included within each of these lines. Now, one thing that's important to point out here is that these are not simply the IRS instructions regurgitated into our book. What we've done is, in plain English, told the student what you would include within each of these lines. We want to do that in as straightforward a manner as possible so the students will genuinely understand how to complete these forms. So, for instance, if there is a line that is unlikely to be completed because it is only used in a particularly specialized circumstance, then we will state that outright. We will tell the student, this line is typically left blank. It is only utilized in such and such a circumstance. 
So we want, again, the student to have that roadmap that they can use in order to complete these forms or do whatever else is necessary throughout the, the payroll solution when they get to the end of the chapter. So we have our introduction here within the exam and the form section of what's going to happen within each of these lines. And then if I scroll down further, you can see we get to our case in point section. The case in point is, again, going to be a walkthrough. We are going to take the students, present to them information that is necessary to complete Form SS4 that's done here in black text. Then in blue text, you can see there are numbered sections. That's where we walk the student through the completion of the form. We give them instruction as to how the form is to be completed. And then on the subsequent page, we show with those numbers pointing to each of the sections of the form to which we were referring previously, a completed version of Form SS4. So we take all the information and we give the student that roadmap so they have something to follow when they get to the end of the chapter and have to complete Form SS4 on their own. What I would like to do next is to skip forward to Chapter 2 so that I can show you similarly how these case in point sections function when we look at calculations. So if you'll bear with me for one moment, I'll jump to that page. Okay, so here's a concept section within Chapter 2 which relates to wage determination issues. You can see the Equal Pay Act is being introduced. Similarly, the On the Web feature that I referred to earlier and now an example of a warning are shown on the page as well. As I scroll down onto the second page of our concept section here, you can see the time cards are introduced. Now, time cards are a good example of an Excel template that we provide to the students for when they are completing exercises that relate to the topic. There are four uh, Excel templates that we've created in which we include up on the Student Resource Center or within eLab for the students to access, all of course free of charge and made available to the students. Uh, and, and that simplifies the completion of these types of exercises. Some others aside from the time card would be the payroll register, the employee earnings record. We, we've provided these to make things easier on the student. So for time cards, as I scroll down to the next case and point section, you can see that similar to the manner in which Form SS4 was completed, when we get to the case in point section, we provide the information necessary for completion of the time card. We then show the completed time card based on the information. And below the time card, we provide information as to how the time card was completed, the process that we undertook in order to fill the time card out, really focusing on any elements that are particularly interesting or perhaps difficult uh, so that the student is drawn to those, those components. Again, the idea here is that we want to answer the questions the student would likely have within the text so that they don't need to ask those questions in the classroom, or if this is in an online environment, so that the students aren't left spinning their wheels trying to figure something out so that they can continue moving forward with the, with the course. So that's how the time card is handled, but really what I wanted to look at as I scroll down here is calculations within Chapter 2. So here is our salaries and wages section. You can see we have a box in the middle there which we use to illustrate what uh, some of the basic calculations in order to determine regular earnings would be. As I scroll down, we have about a page and a half of concept section, and then we get to our case in point. Now, what we're doing here in our case in point section is we, again, present the information. In this case, we provide information relative to the regular pay that has been earned by an employee. And then we walk the student through the completion of the necessary calculations. So we lay out the figures. In this case, it's $11.50 for the first one for Paul Rogers, multiplied by the 35 hours that he worked, which gives you $402.50 as his regular earnings. So we show, we label every one of the numbers within our calculation. We show how to get to that final figure, again, so that the student has a roadmap when they get to the end of the chapter. Now, this is a relatively basic calculation, so I'd like to skip to the next concept section to show you how a slightly more complicated calculation is handled within the text. The next section, next concept section that we have here is converting to hourly rates. And so we begin here and then move on a few more pages. We have weekly wage conversions, which are introduced first. So we show a four-step process that is necessary to determine weekly gross pay based on weekly wages. And then if we look at the next page, we have a five-step process that is introduced to convert from an annual salary to weekly gross pay. So slightly more complicated in terms of the number of steps that are necessary to arrive at the answer. But you can see what we've done when we get to the case in point, as I scroll down to the next page, is that we present the information just as we had in the prior case in point. 
But now, instead of just throwing one calculation up there with a bunch of numbers, we similarly label the figures that we are including within our calculation, and we list them step by step. These steps, of course, mirror the steps that were introduced earlier in the concept section. Again, attempting to provide a roadmap to the students so that they can follow what we are doing here when they move on to the exercises at the end of the chapter. It is this structure that makes this particularly, uh, it certainly it functions and has been designed for a face-to-face -face environment, but it makes this course function very well in an online environment as well because of these step-by-step -step instructions that we've provided. What I'd like to do now is skip to the end of this chapter so I can introduce some of the end of chapter exercises that we've included. So again, if you'll just bear with me for one moment, I'll skip to the next section. So at the beginning of our end of chapter exercises for each of the chapters, we have the concepts review section. This includes 10 true false questions. And if I scroll down here, you can see the multiple choice begin there and continue to the next page. We have 10 of those as well. These multiple choice and true false questions are both included within the text as you see here, as well as within the online environment. So they can be completed in either location. And as we move on, the next section is then practice set A. Now we have two practice sets that are, that are included within the book, and in fact a third practice set which is only online. These practice sets are meant to mirror one another, so we have a, a group of exercises within practice set A which essentially are meant to test all of the information that was introduced earlier in the chapter. In this particular instance for chapter two we have 13 practice set A exercises. Then we have practice set B, and practice set B mirrors practice set A just with different figures, circumstances, employee names, etc. So to give you an example of how that functions, if we take a look at the time card, uh, practice set 2-2A exercise here, you can see that we provide all of the information necessary to complete the time card for two employees. As I scroll down to practice set B now, and as I do so, you can see that we do in fact have 13 exercises here in practice set A. As I scroll down to practice set B, you can see that practice set 2-2B operates in the exact same manner. We're provided with information regarding two employees, and we're asked to complete a time card. That's what all of these practice set exercises look like. They mirror one another so that you can, again, we've focused on flexibility for the educator to as great an extent as possible here. So you are able to assign, let's say, one of these for homework or one of these, let's say, for classwork or group work and another for homework or one for homework, and then you could assign another in class and grade it anything along those lines. We wanted the educator to have a lot of flexibility, so we tried to provide as many exercises as possible. Now, these practice set A and B exercises can be completed manually here, or they can be completed online. Uh, the homework grader system will grade them automatically, and Jason will speak about that a bit later on. Moving forward, the next section that we have, and again, I'll scroll past the 13 practice set B exercises that we have here, is our continuing payroll problem. Similar to what we did in the chapter opener where we spoke about Lucky Ties Apparel and then followed that company throughout the first six chapters, we've done the same thing here with the continuing payroll problem where we've created TCLH Industries, another company, and we follow that company from beginning to end from chapters one through six. So we're asking the student to complete essentially all of the steps that were introduced in chapter two, but relative to this company that they follow all the way throughout. So again, they get to see that one company from beginning to end with regard to the payroll cycle. The next element that we have here is our critical thinking exercises. But before I introduce these, I believe that Natalie has a poll that she'd like to pull up. I do. Great. Thanks, Eric. Uh, one of the things that we'd love to hear from you is, do you currently assign projects in which the students are encouraged or required to perform the research over the internet? Uh, before we get into our critical thinking, we'd love to hear if you do this today. So I'll give you all just a quick uh, minute to answer that. Great. Just a couple more seconds. Super. So uh, it looks like 40% do today, Eric, and 60% uh, maybe only a few or once or twice. Yeah, I, I would say that that's relatively consistent with the feedback that we received when we were conducting our research prior to the beginning of authoring. And what we wanted to do, again, was to provide as much flexibility as possible. So we've included these. They are the final element within the chapter end of chapter exercises. Certainly, if you, you choose not to use them, you don't have to. You can go right past them. But we wanted this flexibility. We wanted this option to be there for the educator. I'll scroll down so you can see the end of CT2-2 there so that folks could assign these and could encourage their students to go to the internet and research certain elements to a greater degree. Uh, now, what we've focused on as much as possible within these critical thinking exercises is state tax 
issues. I mentioned that earlier when we were discussing the appendices. We want to encourage students to go and, and learn more about their particular state's rates, forms, et cetera, because again, we couldn't introduce state tax forms within the book. Uh, it, it, there, there was no streamlined manner in which we could ensure that every student was going to, to be interested or relate to the information that we presented. So we encourage students to learn more about state tax ish, payroll tax issues in this manner. So we touch on, you can see here in CT2-2, state minimum wages, and we do so as much as possible throughout the critical thinking exercises in chapters 1 through 6. The last piece to look at, uh, and this again is the final piece of the end of chapter exercises, but the last piece that I would like to show you is chapter 7, which relates to our comprehensive projects, the one month and the three month project that I referenced earlier. Again, if you'll bear with me for one moment, I'll turn to that page and then we'll take a look at those in more detail. So our comprehensive projects, again, we have the one month and the three month, are designed to be completed either manually or uh, through the use of QuickBooks. And if I scroll down here, I'll show you the beginning of the one month project here, which relates to Ellipses Corp. What we've done is we've created a company which has four employees, and we present information for each of those employees, first with regard to their pay in general, shown here at the bottom. And then if I scroll down to the next page, with regard to the pay that they have earned up to this point in the year. So we provide information for these, for these four employees, in this case, since it is a one-month project, for the first 11 months of the year. The student is then asked to complete all of the payroll cycle uh, functions which relate to December, as well as all of the year-end reporting. That's why we've chosen December, so the year-end reporting will be included as part of the project. The three-month project operates in much the same manner, except that we only provide the first nine months of the year to the student, and the student is asked to then complete the final three. Now, we can complete these, the students can complete these in a manual environment, so we have provided, as I mentioned earlier, Excel templates online for the students to use for items such as the time card, payroll register, etc. We also provide PDF versions of all of the IRS forms. The students can use those to complete all of the necessary forms for the project. Or, alternatively, the educator can choose to assign these projects in a QuickBooks environment. We've included with the text, uh, with this payroll solution, 140-day trial, trial access to QuickBooks for every student. There's a scratch-off uh, item in the inside front cover that allows the students to access the QuickBooks uh, software. And, and so educators can assign these comprehensive projects in a QuickBooks environment. If you choose to do so, we have already provided QuickBooks student files for you so that all of the payroll information leading up to either December in the one-month project or the final quarter of the year, October through December in the three-month project, has already been set up for you. So the student doesn't have to worry about creating those files. Uh, we also have created a user's guide so that the student can get up and running quickly. I'd like to show that to you, but before I do, I believe that Natalie has one more poll that she'd like to take. Great. Yes, Eric. Thank you. So while Eric is getting to the uh, QuickBooks user guide, uh, we'd love to know if you currently require students to uh, enter payroll data into a software program uh, versus doing things manually. So if you can give us your, uh, your selection on that, if you use that today. Uh, great, one more minute there. So 67% say yes, they do use a software program, and 33% no, Eric. Okay, yeah, I mean, I would say, again, that's relatively consistent with the feedback that we received earlier. And we wanted to offer these comprehensive projects in both formats uh, because we, were, again, recognize that this co course is taught in a number of different ways. Uh, one of the pieces of feedback that we certainly received from a lot of folks before we began this process was that they either you know, would like for this process, the use of, of payroll software within their course to be improved, or they would like to use payroll software but don't feel that there's an option out there on the market uh, that, is, that is worthwhile enough for them to pursue that in class. This is why we wanted to have QuickBooks included with our payroll solution. The students are very likely to see QuickBooks when they get out into the real world, and so we wanted to not have some, let's say, homegrown version of a payroll software program, but instead have a real payroll software program that they are very likely to see when they get, get outside of the school's doors available to them with this solution so that they would get practice on a, a real-world practical element. So that's why we've included QuickBooks with this solution. And what I wanted to show you here is the Student Resource Center very briefly. If you look on the inside cover of the textbook, when, if you do have a copy or when you do receive a review copy, what you find is that there is, uh, at the very top of the inside front cover, a URL that's provided to the students. It is labyrinthelab.com slash payroll. 
So a pretty simple URL. When they enter that in, they're brought to this page, and, and this is the Student Resource Center information. Jason will speak about this a little bit more later on, but all of this information, if you choose to use eLab, is also provided in that location, so the students don't need to go to two different websites. But if you chose not to use eLab, they could go here, and these resources are all available to them for free. Uh, that said, if you go to this URL, which again is on the inside front cover of the book, and then simply click on Using QuickBooks for Payroll, and then choose the Click Here option, you're brought to the user's guide that we've created so the student can get up and running very quickly within the QuickBooks environment for these comprehensive projects if the educator chooses to assign them in that manner. So if I scroll down here, you can see that we have essentially a step-by-step -step process that we lay out for the student, including a, a great number of screen captures so that they can walk through that process of, of getting rolling and not have to worry about the logistics of using QuickBooks so much as the actual payroll tax elements themselves, which is, of course, what we really want them focusing on in this course. So as I scroll down a bit more, you can see, again, the manner in which this is handled. So. This, again, is meant to make it, you know, we don't expect students to have a QuickBooks background before they get to this course. We recognize many students will not, so we want to give them the necessary information so they can get rolling with this project, uh, but not focus entirely on, on becoming QuickBooks experts, because that's not the purpose of this particular course. So we get them rolling with the user's guide, and then they can jump into handling the remainder of the comprehensive project on their own. That's essentially what I wanted to walk you through. I believe Jason has some elements now, and I'm going to go back to the text here. Jason has some elements now that he'd like to discuss as well. All right, thank you, Eric. Um, <clears throat> I will uh, take over screen control here. So what I want to talk about now, I'm going to spend a few minutes, is uh, going through uh, some of the additional resources that are included with our payroll accounting solution. All right, so first off, Eric mentioned uh, you know, a few times our, our eLab course. Um, the textbook comes with uh, the QuickBooks trial software license and an eLab license. So eLab is our online platform. It's, it's, it's our automated assessment and learning management um, system or tool. Um, <clears throat> so I want to talk about some of the benefits of, of using the eLab course with, with the payroll textbook. Um, we do have the, the student resource center that Eric just, just showed you. Um, that is accessed simply by you know going to a URL. There's no there's no password or anything required. Uh, the eLab course is where the students will create an account. Um, they'll enroll in your payroll accounting eLab course, and the benefit of using eLab is, is it provides um, a, a, a lot of benefits both to the instructor and the student. And again, the eLab license key is included in the cost of the textbook, so there is no additional cost to the student uh, if you choose to use the eLab course. Um, the eLab course contains all of the content that is available at the Student Resource Center, um, but it also contains additional uh, resources for both uh, you as the instructor and the student. Um, one of those things is the, the, the test banks and the pre-built test li uh, library. So we do provide test banks to you in the instructor support package. Um, that would be a paper-based test, but if you want to give your tests online and have them all be automatically graded, the eLab course enables you to do that. So we have a, a, a robust uh, te uh, te test bank, um, test banks in the eLab course, and we've created pre-built tests for each chapter in the book and a, uh, uh, a pre-built final exam as well to, 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 to assist you in, in setting up your tests. Um, all of the tests, if they're taken through eLab, are all automatically graded, so we completely eliminate the grading of tests for you. Um, the eLab course also uh, contains a pre-built assignment library, so all of the end of chapter assignments uh, from the book are already set up for you in eLab to, to, to make it very easy for you to, to assign these various exercises or projects to the students. Um, Eric mentioned the practice sets A and B that are printed in the book. Um, there, is a, there is a third practice set, practice set C, that is included uh, in the instructor support package and in the eLab course as well. So, so the eLab course allows the students to access that um, uh, online. Um, there are also video tutorials. It's not on my slide here, but we do uh, provide some video tutorials per chapter uh, for the student. Uh, there's, there's two per chapter. And uh, one of the videos will be a kind of an overview of the various topics that are going to be introduced in that chapter. And then the other one um, addresses specific topics that uh, are either you know, very important topics or, or uh, more difficult or challenging topics. So, so we provide that additional resource to the students. And um, 
one of the new features of, of our uh, payroll accounting ELAB course for the second edition is the introduction of our homework grader tool, um, which I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, over the next few slides. But what the homework uh, grader does is it allows the students to complete practice sets A, B, and C online um, pr and provides feedback to them. And um, also, everything is automatically graded. So we'll eliminate the grading of the um, practice set exercises uh, to, uh, for you as well. So um, again, the uh, homework grader tool uh, does provide the automatically, uh, automatic grading. Um, and, it, and it allows the students to complete the forms, the templates, and, and all the exercises uh, completely online. And another nice feature of it is the check my work feature, which as the instructor, you have the ability to enable or disable as you choose. So what that does is as the student completes each exercise within the practice set, they can click a button uh, called check my work, and that will let the student know if each of the um, their questions or, or uh, lines in the form within the exercise, if they completed those correctly or incorrectly. Um, so it's a, great, it's, a, it, it, it's a great study tool as well. And like, like vir virtually everything in eLab, uh, we're, we're all about providing flexibility to you as the instructor. So the check my work feature, you have the option to turn that on or off. So for example, you may want to enable the check my work feature in let's say knowledge, or excuse me, practice set A in the chapter, but disable it in practice sets B and or C. So uh, we just, we, we, we provide a lot of flexibility to you um, as the instructor. Um, so I'm going to go just go through a, a couple slides here showing you um, screen captures of the homework grader tool and some of the um, exercises just so you can kind of get a feel for what it looks like and, and, and how it functions. So this first um, screen capture here is of the assignment start page. Um, so when you set up a practice set and assign it to the students through eLab, they will, this is where they will start that assignment. So they'll come to the start page and th uh, this is where they can start or resume an assignment. So they, the student does have the option to, as they're working through the assignment, to save it and come back to it at a later time and complete it. Um, this is also where the student can uh, view the results of the assignment and, and, and get feedback for, for, for how they did on that particular uh, practice set, or, um, yeah, practice set exercise. <clears throat> uh, this is a screen capture of the student interface once they're within an exercise. Um, up at the top here, you've got the previous, next, and go-to buttons. That's how the student navigates. Um, through the, the various exercises within the practice set, and the Submit Assignment button is what they would click once they've completed the assignment and are ready to submit it for grading. Uh, the three buttons below the blue bar, um, the Calculator button, which is labeled A, um, we, we built in a calculator to the Homework Grader tool so that if the student needs to perform some calculations, they can click this button and, and, and have a, a calculator you know, readily available for them. And the, and the student can drag, and, um, drag the calculator around the screen so they can move it out of the way um, so it's not blocking any, you know, any particularly important part of the exercise. The next button to the right is the Check My Work button. That's what they would click if you've enabled that feature uh, for that particular practice set. That's, they can uh, click that button. It will, it will check their work for them. And then the third button, uh, button labeled C, is save, uh, save the Assignment. So that's if the student's not completed the assignment but they need to move on to something else, they can click that. It will save the assignment where they're at, and they can come back to it and resume it at a later time. Um, the next few slides are uh, screen captures of some of the various exercises. It, um, in this case, the student's given a scenario, and then they must answer three questions about that scenario. Um, and, and they're different types of questions. So there's a multiple choice followed by a question that asks them to you know, determine the compliance with the Fair Labor Standards Act. And then in the third exercise, uh, or question within this exercise, they need to perform a calculation. The next exercise uh, is an example of how we would provide the student with um, uh, various scenarios, and they have to um, you know, determine you know, what type of pay period it would be and whether or not that uh, scenario is compliant with, uh, in this case, the Fair Labor Standards Act. Uh, the next, this screen capture uh, is an example of a, um, an exercise where the student has to fill out some kind of template. So Eric mentioned we provide various templates uh, for the student, um, such as time cards, the payroll register, uh, the employee uh, payroll record. Um, and this would be an example of how they would complete that type of template on, in, in the online environment. 
then this screen capture is a, an example of a of a uh, exercise where the student needs to complete a form. In this case, the SS4 form, and we've worked very hard to make these forms um, as realistic as possible. Uh, we want them to to mirror as closely as possible the actual IRS form that the student would would complete if they had downloaded the form from the IRS website uh, and completed it manually. Um, this exercise would be an example of where the student is provided um, information up at the top um, regarding um, uh, what the overtime uh, hourly overtime wage would be, and the student is then provided uh, multiple scenarios where they have to calculate what the uh, employee's gross pay would be. This exercise would be an example of where the student completes uh, some type of accounting form, in this case uh, an income statement. So they would choose the various expenses from the drop-down menus on the left, and to the right of those drop-down menus there, there uh, would be two, two columns, um, and the student would have to enter the, uh, the amount of the various expenses in the appropriate uh, left or right column. And the final screen capture is the completion page. So once the student has completed the assignment and submit it, uh, if you choose to release their score immediately, the student would get their score immediately, and also they could view the results um, of, of the individual exercises uh, by clicking the View Result button from this page. Like with the Check My Work feature, um, we really try and build in a lot of flexibility for the instructor. So when you set up the assignments, you have complete control over what information and the student receives and when they receive that information. So for example, you may choose to give them their score immediately upon completing the, um, the assignment, but, but hold off on releasing the actual details of the individual exercises that the student completed within that assignment until you know, the due date passes and all students have completed the, the, the um, assignment. OK, I'm going to move on now to a few other uh, resources that we provide. Uh, we've talked a little bit about the Student Resource Center. Um, Eric uh, brought you there to see the Using QuickBooks for Payroll user guide. So the Student Resource Center URL is printed on the inside front cover of the book. And this is simply a site, there's no password required, um, that the student can go to to access uh, some of the resources that are available. Um, this is where they can um, download the various IRS forms that are used throughout the book. Um, PDFs of those forms, as well as uh, Excel templates of, of, of various things, such as the time card and the payroll register. Um, the student uh, can take the concept review quiz that is uh, at the end of each chapter in the book. Uh, they can take that um, quiz online through the Student Resource Center. It's automatically graded, and the students provided instant feedback. Um, we also provide overview presentations to introduce the students to the various topics that are going to be introduced uh, in that chapter. And this is where the student can also access any WebQuest exercises where they're, they're, they need to go out onto the internet and um, complete some kind of research uh, in order to uh, complete the, um, the exercise. Also from the Student Resource Center, the student can download the QuickBooks student files that Eric mentioned um, that are used with the two comprehensive projects so that that, that first nine month or 11 month data is uh, loaded into QuickBooks for them when they um, open or restore the company or portable company uh, files that are provided. Now, if you choose to use the eLab course, all of this content is also included in the eLab course. So the students are not going to have to go to two different sites. Um, if you do choose to use the eLab course, they don't have to come to the Student Resource Center to get some of their um, resources and then access other things from the eLab course. Anything that is available on this site is also included in the eLab course. Uh, we also provide with all of our solutions, and certainly including our payroll accounting solution, a robust instructor support package that, in, that really includes a lot of various resources for you as the educator. Um, there are different categories such as course preparation um, resources, teaching resources such as lecture notes, PowerPoint presentations, um, lesson plans. Uh, we provide in the instructor support package all of the uh, sol solutions to the various exercises uh, that are used throughout the book. Um, there are testing resources available as well, um, such as the uh, practice set C and um, the test banks. So if you choose not to use the ELAB course, the test banks are all provided to you uh, in, in a paper-based format. Um, from the instructor resource package. But, but again, all of those are, are also online in the eLab course um, if you choose to use that. 
All right, so I'd like to uh, just take a minute to talk about the pricing and availability of our solution. Um, the first edition of the uh, payroll accounting solution is currently available. The second edition will be available uh, December 2nd of this year. And the pricing, um, one of the core, com uh, core uh, company values that, that we've uh, had from the beginning of Labyrinth Learning is to help keep education uh, affordable for students. We do understand that the cost of textbooks are rising significantly and it's it really can become a burden to, to many students. So we, we, um, we always strive to price our, our, our solutions uh, as affordably as possible. So the net price of the payroll accounting solution, um, the net price to the bookstore or you know, the cost of the bookstore is $94.95. Um, the students can order the book directly from us. If they were to do so, uh, the price would be $123.50. And these prices include the QuickBooks 140-day uh, trial software license and the eLab license key. So we, 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 we've set up the solution to have um, an all-inclusive pricing, so there's no add-ons. It's not, you don't adopt the solution, then, oh, if you want to use the eLab course, we're going to charge you this much more. Oh, if you want the software, we're going to charge you this much more. Everything is all included in, in this um, very affordable price. Jason? Yes. I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to answer a question by Rick so everyone can know also. Uh, both the first edition and the second edition also have an enhanced ebook option, and that ebook price is $74.25. So the students do also have that electronic option. Yes, thank you for pointing that out, Natalie. And the ebook option, like the print, the print option, um, does also include the QuickBooks license and the eLab license key. So um, in either either option, everything is all all included. Okay, if you'd like more information um, about this solution or any of our solutions, you can um, visit our website uh, at lablearning.com. If you register as an educator, um, that will allow you to uh, view the, an online book review uh, of any of our, any of our uh, solutions. You can, you can review the entire book online. You can also order um, review copies or desk copies uh, from our, our website. And uh, by logging in as an educator, you can download the instructor resources that I just talked about a moment ago. Um, if you don't know who your sales rep is and, and would like to contact them, you can find uh, their information. Uh, from the website, um, and at the bottom, I've, we've provided Eric's uh, email address. Um, as the author, he's very interested in hearing your feedback, um, your comments on the solution. So um, his email address is listed here, and we we do encourage you to contact him um, to provide him any feedback uh, or ideas that you may have on how we can improve our solutions. Okay, and again, I just want to summarize what's included in the uh, payroll accounting solution. Uh, you get the textbook, uh, the various templates, accounting templates such as the payroll register, the time card, and so on. Um, you can uh, links to download all the IRS forms and publications. Uh, the eLab license key with the homework grader technology is is included, as is the QuickBooks trial uh, software to be used uh, as your um, payroll software for the two comprehensive projects. Uh, students have access to the Student Resource Center, and as the instructor, uh, your instructor support materials are always included free of charge with any, uh, any one of our solutions. And before we get to questions, just some next steps you may want to consider um, by going to our website. As I mentioned, you can order a review copy of the first edition. Um, you can also pre-order uh, the second edition that will be available in um, December. You can uh, check out the student resources student resources by going to the uh, Student Resource Center. Um, that URL is, is provided on the inside front cover of the book. And um, if you would like more information or want to uh, get a demo of the eLab course in the homework grader, you can um, re request that from your sales rep, uh, uh, again, through our website. And um, just any general questions you have, uh, we'll, we'll be answering questions here in just a moment. But um, if you, something comes up after the webinar, please feel free to contact Eric at the email address that I provided uh, or your sales representative, and uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Well, that concludes our presentation. So at this time, um, I would like to turn it over to questions. Thanks, Jason. Uh, so feel free to type away any questions you have. We already have some questions that I'd like to, uh, to, I'd like to start with. So, uh, so as I start, please feel free, like I said, to type away, and uh, we will be happy to help. So the first question uh, 
comes from Rick about the solution guide. Uh, one of the comments there, questions that he had is, does the solution guide also show the calculations of how uh, something would be uh, calculated that often helps them with grading? So can you speak to that a little bit? Um, Eric, I'm going to let you take that question. Yeah, absolutely. The solutions manual does show the calculations. Uh, what we do is, in particular, is the calculations. You know, if it's something basic, just you know, along the lines of number of hours worked, like thir like like the example we illustrated earlier, where it was 35 hours times uh, 11 dollars and 40 cents, I believe was what, what it was what it was per hour. We may not you know lay those elements out, but any time there is a, any type of calculation that requires a step-by-step -step process to get to the final answer, we do lay those out and we do label each of the elements that are necessary within the calculation to get to the final answer. Um, so yes, we do show those elements within the solutions manual. Great, thank you. Uh, next question comes from Samantha, and uh, it's really clarifying uh, if you could in eLab the format of the test bank questions versus the homework grader, and then also the question came up about uh, are they algorithmic or static in eLab? Okay. Um, sure. The test banks would, uh, t they, they tend to be more conceptual questions. So uh, they, the different question types are, you know, true-false, multiple choice, matching, and fill-in-the-blank questions. Um, the real difference between the, the test banks, which, which tend to focus on the concepts that are introduced, and the homework grader is that the, the, the test banks, as I said, focus on the concepts. The homework grader focuses on the exercises. So the homework grader allows the student to complete the practice sets A, B, and C that are at the end of the chapter. Um, a and B are at the end of, end of each chapter. C is, is, is not included in the book. It's, it's kind of an additional um, practice set if you, that you want to give, uh, if you want to give where the students haven't seen the, the exercises before. Um, that, so what the homework a homework grader does is it really uh, assesses the student's ability to um, perform the various you know tasks tasks within the payroll cycle, such as you know performing calculations, such as you know determining gross pay or wages or whatnot, filling out the various forms and in, in the various templates. Um, regarding the question of uh, algorithmic, in this edition, um, the homework grader is is not algorithmic, so all students will get the same set of data, the same scenarios. Um, in the third edition of the book, which will come out you know, next year at this time, uh, that's we are looking to imp implement the um, algorithmic um, uh, practice sets at, at that point. But, but for this edition, uh, it is static. Great. Thanks, Jason. Uh, another question uh, by Rick. Uh, is it is it going to be an issue, or do you foresee that sometimes the student answers for that homework grader might be off by cents due to rounding or something like that? Or how have we addressed that? Oh, uh, that's a great question. Yeah, um, what we are building into uh, homework grader is there will be a tolerance allowed, and as the instructor, you'll be able to set that tolerance. So you could say, for example, that as long as the student is you know plus or minus you know five cents within the value then you know, grade it correctly. Um, but uh, like with, again, everything else that we do in ELAB, we're, we're trying to build in flexibility. So we, we're not just going to determine what that tolerance is. We're not going to say it's five cents. We're going to let you as the educator set that tolerance for each of the individual uh, practice sets. So you may want it to be a dollar. You may want it to be five cents. That will be completely up to you. But, but that tolerance will be there for you. Great. Good. Thank you for, uh, for letting everyone know. Uh, with respect to eLab and the homework grader and the timing, I know that you mentioned that the book is launching on December 2nd. Uh, will homework grader at eLab be available at that same time, or is there any chance of setting it up sooner? What's the timing of everything? Yeah, the homework grader and the eLab course will be available uh, on that date, uh, the in-stock date of the book. Um, and it's, it's really tied to, you know, we, we, we uh, we, we can't finalize the various exercises until you know the exercises in the book are final and have been through our QA process and all of our proofing. So um, that will be released at, at the time of the book. And by the way, um, I, I did mention that the book will be available December 2nd. However, uh, that book will be um, shipping to press uh, next week. And once the book ships to press, we will actually post the PDF of the entire book online in our online book review. Um, so if you register as an educator and then log into our website, you'll be able to download um, 
the full copy of the book as a PDF uh, as early as, uh, I'm not going to say next week, but probably the week after. So, you know, a good month before the in-stock date of the book, of the printed book, you'll be able to access the book online. Super, super. And then uh, another good question. So if someone had uh, received the first edition, so is it something that they're automatically going to get the second edition, or should they verify with their uh, sales rep or, or place another order online? You should definitely place the order online or let your sales rep know that you want to get it. Um, our sales reps are very good about you know, following up with people um, you know, to see if they, they, you know, they want a new book. We'll send out an email blast. Um, you know, once the book is released, or, or or you know, shortly before it's released, but no, you will not automatic. We're not going to automatically send you the second edition, so you you should request that from your sales rep. Oh, good to know. Good to know. Thank you. And uh, so keep uh, coming in questions. We have a, a final question here, but if you have any more, we're almost wrapped up. So type it in. Uh, we want to know: uh, Can someone QA and volunteer to QA the uh, payroll homework grader, or are we all set with that? Absolutely. Um, my email address is jason at lablearning.com. I'll say that again. It's jason at lablearning, L-A-B learning.com. Um, yeah. Email me, and we would absolutely, uh, we are, uh, we will have people QA in this. So um, uh, I'm the person to contact about that. Great, great. Good to know. Okay. Do we have any other questions before we uh, we wrap up here? Uh, I hope that we've been able to address everything. Do you have any final comments, Jason or Eric, as we wrap up the webinar? I would just like to thank everyone for taking an hour out of your, I'm sure, very busy day to uh, spend it with us to learn more about the solution. Uh, we really do appreciate your time and hope that you'll uh, give the solution a, a good look. Great. Thank you. And thank you, Eric, again for all of the time uh, you've spent helping us with the webinar and the payroll solution. Oh, absolutely, Natalie. Thank you. And, and I'll echo Jason's sentiments, but also uh, mention again that I know Jason referenced this earlier. I am eager to hear feedback uh, from each of you as you look at the payroll solution and then and hopefully some of you adopt it and, and use it in the classroom to hear what your impressions are and then how it's been working for you in the class. So please do get in touch. I genuinely want the feedback and, and we are going to be responsive to the feedback that we receive as we move forward with subsequent additions. So please do stay in touch. I, I would love to hear how it's working out for you. Great. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.